Okay, today we're going to talk about a Goodman Defrost controller. It's PCBDM130. And this is in a whole lot of Goodman stuff. It's in Goodman stuff now. It's been in a similar model all the way back into the 1990s. Uh, they've been using the same one for a while. It's just a low cost board. There's no time delay built in, uh, no short cycle time or anything like that. Just plain Jane Defrost board. So what we're going to do is go through how it works, what it does, and what are all these wiring designations on the board. Across the base of the board you see there are several wiring designations from left to right. And these are all low voltage wires. You have C is common, Y is your contactor, you have two O's, that's your reversing valve wires. One goes to the valve, one comes in uh, from the thermostat. W2, that's your heat strip wire. When your defrost controller uh, sends you into defrost, uh, you'll have a 24 volt signal heading out to your heat strips from there. You have two R terminals. It's just red terminals. One of them is the red 24 volt signal coming into the defrost board from the thermostat. And one of the terminals, the one on the right, exits to the defrost thermostat and then returns on your DFT. That's defrost thermostat wire. Our first wire is the common, and it basically just comes from a low voltage field connection. It can run straight to the defrost board. Uh, it doesn't have to come from there, it just has to come from some source. Uh, it could actually come from the contactor, but for this purpose, it's coming from the low voltage field connection. The second wire, our Y wire, comes directly from the contactor, as you can see here. You have our L1, L2 is our high voltage, T1, T2 is high voltage, the other side of the contactor. And you have the base of the contactor, the coil. You have your blue, which is a common, and your Y, which is your 24 volt from the thermostat. Our third wire is the first O terminal, that's for the reversing valve. And that is coming from the low voltage field connection. The second O terminal, which you see right there, it's black in color, will run down to the reversing valve solenoid. So it runs from the second O terminal, it's a black wire running down to the reversing valve, and the other black wire of the reversing valve will run to the other side of the contactor, which is common. The next wire is the W2, and when defrost initiates, it will send a 24 volt signal to the heat strips to turn them on. The purpose being that when the air conditioning is running, defrosting the outdoor coil, you don't want the house to get cold, therefore the heat strips will run to make sure the house doesn't get a cold blast of air. The last three are all red wires. The first one coming from the low voltage field connection, or will run down to that connection. The second one and third one go to the defrost thermostat. Uh, these little defrost thermostats are little clip-on thermostats that go on the outdoor coil that sense the temperature on the coil. The two wires on the side, on the right here, the purple and red, go to the fan relay. When defrost initiates, the contacts open and the fan shuts off. The reason why this happens, the fan shuts off to raise the head pressure. Higher head pressure equals higher heat melts the ice on the outdoor coil more effectively. How this relay works is that the defrost temperature sensor or thermostat right here, whenever it gets cold enough it will actually close. And when it closes a couple things happen. On this relay here these two contacts close. Power flows to the heat strips and to the reversing valve. That means the machine switches into AC and the heat strips come on. Like we discussed earlier, that's so it'll melt the ice and the heat strips are so it will be uncomfortable inside while it's doing that. Defrost cycles can last a few minutes and you know, that could be 45 or 50 degree air coming out for three or four minutes in the middle of the winter. That could be a real big deal and it could cause the system not to keep up on a very cold night. Along with that, these contacts open the outdoor fan turns off to raise the head pressure and also in turn raise the heat to melt the ice. So that's basically how it works. Now we'll take a look at the board and see a couple other features. 
As you see, we talked about the two relays and contacts. This is your fan relay on the board. This is the other relay where it sends the power to the reversing valve and uh, the heat strips. What we're going to talk about here is, as you see, there's a 30, 60, 90 in test. 30, 60, 90 is your defrost interval. Whether you want it to be 30 minute intervals, 60 minutes, or 90. Milder climates will probably choose 90 because it'll be less critical. And if you're a more northerly climate, you'll probably choose 30, so it defrosts more often. On the very end, you see a test pin. You will slide, see here, there's a little pin down here. There it is. Take it off, put it on test. It doesn't immediately go into defrost. It can take up to 21 seconds to go into defrost. Basically, it just speeds up the interim, your 30, 60, or 90 minute interval. I think it speeds it up by a degree of 256 times as fast. So under a 90 minute interval, that will entail that it could take up to 21 minutes. Doesn't mean it, or 21 seconds, sorry. Doesn't mean it have to, but it can. So make sure you uh, use some patience when you're testing it. Give it the right amount of time. And that is the Goodman Defrost Board, board number PCBD-M130.